I feel good, na 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 na, because I make good decisions. Do you need to make good decisions? How do we know that we're making good decisions? As a leader, as a coach, as a parent, do you need to be decisive? And is there a foolproof plan for making good decisions fast? Because that's the definition technically of decisive, is that yes, I made a good decision, but I didn't take a long time to make the decision. So what's the plan? And it's been suggested by the best in the world that there's several things to consider. And because I've applied them uh, and they've worked for me, it's been a really special experience to know that my decision-making process actually goes through a process. I'm not just making decisions on the fly, particularly as a leader, you obviously can't do that. Uh, but you don't want to make decisions emotionally either. So let's start there. Logical versus emotional. And it could be a really good thing to, I've got to make a decision. If you're emotional, if you're angry, if you're sad, if you're excited, uh, if you're in lust, all the big strong emotions, could it be a really good idea not to make a, a big decision when you're emotional? Because when you're logical, the opposite end of the scale, is you're now thinking clearly. What if? Critical thinking. Uh, uh, pros and cons. Uh, you're thinking about it from a, an outside point of view rather than in the heat of the moment. So there's a great place to start. The, the decision I'm about to make, am I making it based on emotion or should I wait a little while? And this is a really good time to consider about, yes, make fast decisions, that's decisive, but if you're emotional, could it be a really good idea to wait? So if you're angry or if you're upset, if you are acting emotionally, could it be a really good idea to put that decision off until you are calm? And calm just simply means your blood pressure's normal, your heart rate's gone back to normal, your blood sugar levels are normal, you're breathing freely and you can think clearly. So there's a great place to start. The second thing to consider is what the experts say. We make decisions based on pleasure or pain or both. So will this increase the pleasure in my life? Will it decrease pain or hassle in my life? Or a combination of both? Now the logical part of that is that why would you make a decision if it's going to increase pain and decrease pleasure or take value out of your life? Of course, that's a silly thing to do, but could it be a great question to ask? I've got to make this decision right now. Will it add value to my life or is it going to devalue from my life? Will it uh, increase the pleasure and, and uh, the, the way I live my life and make it better or is it going to make it worse? And an excellent step just to consider before you make the decision. decision. So first step, emotional versus logical. Second step is, am I in the right headspace for pleasure and pain, and um, have I got the balance right? The next thing about decision making, of course, is uh, who am I? And I've made this a really simple process because I was taught a very long time ago that decide who you're going to be as a person, be that person in every area of your life. And for me, it's been awesome because it makes the decision making process, I'm almost lazy. Because when I was 18 years of age, I went to a conference. This was the uh, probably one of the most defining moments of my life. The question was asked, pick five words to describe you as a person, be that person in every area of your life. So I picked tough and fair, positive, stylish, disciplined and professional. I connected those words to my hand, tough and fair, positive, stylish, disciplined and professional. And every time I need to make a decision, I ask myself the question, would a tough and fair, positive, stylish, disciplined and professional woman do that? Would she go there? Would she buy that? Would she invest time or waste time with those people? And again, I don't have to make a decision because if the answer is no, uh, that's what a lazy person would do or that's what an unprofessional person would do or that's what a negative person would do, then I'm not going to do that. So that might be the fundamental start is if I'm going to make a decision, should it be based on the kind of person that I am? Now, obviously, you're going to have different words to me, but who are you? What do you stand for? What do you believe in? What would you die for? And then pick five words to describe that person and then base all of your decision decisions on that person. Who am I? What do I stand for? What do I believe in? What do I die for? What do I want to be known as? What's my reputation? And if I want to keep that reputation, then the decisions that I make and everything else that I do needs to be that person. Because otherwise, and this is just a very important side note, if I'm this person or I want to be this person, but I'm not, or I'm pretending to be that person and I'm not, how quickly would people find that out? And what would happen to our decision-making process? Reverse other people's decisions to make uh, 
to be involved with us, to do business with us, to have a relationship with us, to be involved with what we do, if we're pretending to be something that we're not, how quickly would somebody find that out? So logical or emotional, pain or pleasure, and then who are you, what do you stand for? and make decisions based on that person. It's a foolproof plan to make better decisions. Now, it doesn't mean you're always gonna make good ones, but, and here's a great thing to consider. I was taught again a very long time ago that there are no bad decisions, and the reason for that, well, there's no good or bad ones. There's just decisions, because once you've made a decision and you've acted on that decision, you can't change it. It's now become a thing of the past. There are no should-haves, could-haves, would-haves. There's either I did or I didn't. So rather than getting frustrated or annoyed about, I made a bad decision, and this, and when, and this is Romax, so I talk about healthy, fit and strong, career or business that you love, be financially free and have great people in your life. And if you made a decision about your health and fitness that didn't work, or you made a, a decision about your career path or your business and it didn't work, if you made a decision about where to spend your money or invest your money and it didn't work, or if you chose a relationship and it hasn't worked out for you, you can't change that. That decision isn't good or bad. It was just a decision. But here's the really cool thing. You don't have to live with that decision. You can change it. You can change your mind. You can't change the past, but you can certainly make sure that your past has a positive effect on your future. So if you made a poor decision about your health and fitness, change it. Don't do that again. Learn from the experience. If you had a lousy, stinking, rotten job or you went into business with somebody that was not a nice person or you made silly business decisions, again, there's no silly decisions. It's just, I've learned from that. I'm not going to do it again. Isn't that awesome that we can learn from our mistakes? We don't have to dwell on them and be angry with ourselves about them. We can just get better because of them. Money is an interesting one because we, we buy things and we can't give them back usually. So... And even if you can, some people get angry about that, don't they? I bought that and now I've got to send it back because it's not the right thing. Well, you can't change the decision that you made to buy the thing. But you either send it back and don't have to live with it or you learn for next time. So I'm not going to buy that kind of thing again. I'm not going to put my money there, waste my money there again. And if you're in a poor financial situation, so the decisions that you've made up until now have either made you broke or poor or struggling for money, could it be a really good idea to learn from that and change so that you make better decisions in the future? How awesome! Now, relationships, of course, are interesting because we can't change what other people do, but we certainly have full control over who we choose to have in our life. And if we've had poor relationships who have had relationships that have been disrespectful or that people have treated us badly let's just learn from those not get angry about those decisions we can't change them just make better ones in the future so I'll give you a simple example uh, exercise uh, that's your health and fitness so logically or emotionally should I exercise and if you go to logical immediately if you go to logical of course you need to exercise if you don't exercise your body's going to rot away you're going to be at risk of picking up all the horrible inactivity diseases, you'll get old fast, you'll get weak, sick, frail, yuck. So it's really logical to exercise. But if you're in an emotional state, if you're angry, if you're tired, if you're annoyed, a lot of people skip their exercise and that's an interesting time to say, I need to take the logical approach here. I don't feel like exercising, feeling is emotional, yeah? But logically, if I don't exercise, what will happen? And logically, if I do exercise, how good am I going to feel? Bloody great. So I let logic take over there, and rather than thinking about it too much, just go and exercise, and obviously you'll feel better. Pleasure or pain, if you apply pleasure or pain to should I exercise decision, uh, there's a major pain of not exercising, and there's a major pleasure if you do exercise. So it's a great spot to be in. And if you are a parent, a teacher, a coach, a boss, or a leader, or you just want to be a healthy human being, uh, and you want to be described as a healthy human being, not a sick, weak, frail one, then of course you're going to exercise. So if you apply those three steps to a decision about should I exercise today, the answer is going to be of course. That you don't need to make a decision. Food's an interesting one because a lot of people don't eat, uh, if you start with logic versus emotion, a lot of people don't eat for logic. A lot of people don't eat because they're hungry. That's the logical reason to eat. I need to eat because I'm hungry. I need to eat so I perform well. A lot of people eat because they're angry. They're frustrated. They're annoyed. They're hurt. They're sad. They're depressed. They're happy. It's a social occasion and I feel good and they end up eating more than they would normally. So here's a great question to ask when you're about to eat. Am I going to eat for logical reasons or emotional reasons? Now, sometimes the emotion is I just feel like eating because it's yummy and I want to have 
pleasure in my life and there's no challenge with that, but then you have to apply logic to that. If I eat this and it adds pleasure to my life right now, what's it gonna do in the future? So there might be pleasure in a big KFC meal or a takeaway meal right now, but how will I feel after the meal? Logically, how am I gonna feel? And emotionally, how am I gonna feel? Because if, if I think this is a bad food and then I eat it, Emotionally, will I feel guilty? And of course, guilt is a horrible emotion. And you can't change what you ate. Now, there are some people who try. There's that whole horrible bulimic situation where people eat food and then try and throw it up or vomit it out or the same thing, or take laxatives to poo it out or to exercise it off. But what a horrible state to be in. And that is obviously emotional. So if you're about to eat something, there's a great question to ask. If you don't just eat for, because it's time to eat and you love eating, and you've got to make a decision about your food. How about this? Am I eating for logical reasons or emotional reasons? Uh, will it add pleasure to my life or will it add pain to my life or both? And sometimes with food, that's why I'm asking the question because sometimes there's a short-term pleasure, but there's a long-term pain and there's something that, there that you've got to weigh up. I'm going to get a pleasurable, yummy experience now, but what will be the painful experience in the future? Will I feel guilty? Will I feel angry? Will I regret that I ate this? And it's a, a really interesting thing to consider if that's something with, well, if you've got any challenges with the way you deal with the with your whole eating and food situation. And then what kind of person am I? So if I'm a tough and fair, positive, stylish, disciplined and professional person, my word's not yours, I get that, but would I eat this? So it's one of the reasons why I don't smoke, I don't drink, uh, I don't want to put crappy stuff into my body because that's not who I am. I'm tough and fair, positive, stylish, disciplined and professional and I don't want to put crap into my body. That's my decision. You're going to make that decision yourself and that's what this is about. Do you need to make better decisions about every area of your life? Do you need to be decisive? And decisive means quick decisions. So if you put yourself through this process and that's why as a leader, uh, one of the things that is respected is the fact that you can be decisive. You can make good decisions fast. But if you've got a process to do that, is it likely that you'll do it better? So am I coming from a logical or emotional place? Is it pain and pleasure? And who am I? What kind of person would make this decision? And that's when you come to the leadership questions because sometimes the decisions you have to make as a leader, parent, teacher, coach, there's a lot of short-term pain applied to not just you but other people. But if you're looking at the long-term logical result, the long-term positive result, the long-term solution finding results, one of those things that I wish politicians did a little bit more of, rather than the short-term pleasure of being re-elected, how about the long-term pleasure of, please, we want a great country to live in. So could we apply some of those logical, adding pleasure decisions to the, what's happening in the country so that long term the country can be in a great space. And then if you are a great person, because you've decided to be, who are you? Who do you want to be known as? Who do you want, what kind of person do you want to be remembered as? Then maybe you're going to make better decisions. And I, I'm using politics as an example, but of course, parent, teacher, coach, boss, leader are all the same. A recognized leadership trait is decisiveness, good decisions made fast that add value to other people's lives. So I'll wrap all of that up. Am I making decisions illogically or emotionally? Are they gonna add massive pleasure and decrease pain? And are they representative of the person I am? Am I lowering my core values and my standards to make this decision or am I raising my standards to make great decisions? And I think they're all really important questions because we live in a world now where people are weak, unfit, frail, depressed, sick and diseased. We live in a world where a lot of people hate their job, they don't like the business they're in, they're not proud of the career path they've chosen. We live in a world where there's lots of people that are broke, financially in trouble, struggling for money. And we live in a world where there's lots of people in bad relationships, disrespectful relationships. That's what I'm here for every day. Those four things to me are the ultimate about great decisions. Decide to be healthy, fit and strong. Decide to have a career or business that you love. Decide to be financially free and only have great people in your life. And could they be great decisions so you can live your life to the max? Woohoo!